Hey everyone, I'm making a 1080 hybrid. So in the first video, we took this apart. This is a GTX 1080 and we're turning it into a liquid cooled card. I have a few good reasons for that. One is because I want to, and two is because overclocking. So we had some thermal throttling issues with the stock cooler, which I would pick up and show you, but it's in pieces like this and like this. This is the alloy heat sink that went on underneath it. So the first video, we take this apart and we encountered a few points of tension and drama. And those are mostly uh, involving this screwdriver pen thing and this hammer, which happened after the video concluded because I could not get the screw out of there that got sucked into it. So you can watch the first video if you want to see how that happened. Uh, spoiler alert, the screw is still in there. So I gave up on that. Uh, but we are moving on now and installing the liquid solution onto this thing. This of course being the 1080 proper. Um, so I, let's get started, I guess. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is locate on the pump, uh, the plug for power. So that's what this is. This is from EVGA. Uh, this is an Asetek pump and they are all basically the a standard pump. So what we have here is the VRM blower fan that's stock with the 1080. This fan has a cable here and this cable plugs into the PCB and that's how you power the VRM blower fan for the stock solution. That's no good for us because we have to power a pump as well as the VRM fan. So they're both going to be powered in our solution. That means we need to tap in to the same spot on the PCB and that is done by plugging, uh, effectively bridging this VRM fan into this solution from the pump and then that into the board and that powers all of it. So we're just going to try and try and do that right now, which is not the easiest thing in the world to do. You'll see, I actually removed this since our last video because it's getting in the way. So we removed that and we're just going to go ahead and figure out the best way to route this through there. So I'm gonna push this out. There's thermal pads all over the back of this thing, by the way, so I'm trying not to touch it because I don't want to compromise anything more than I have to. Uh, so we're just gonna connect that like that. So that is done. We now have power for the VRM fan and for the pump. Push the cable through there, and then I'm gonna try and connect this to the PCB while not losing any thermal pads in the process. I think we're aligned the correct way. This is very, very difficult. Uh, okay. Sweet. There we go. All right. Cool. So that's connected. That's all we have to do. So now we've got power to everything. I'm going to just mount this loosely back where it belongs on top of the PCB. In theory, we've got a bunch of cables here now in the way. So I'm going to kind of move those around. Now the problem with this is this is built for 980 Ti, uh, so it is not meant for a 1080. And that means that if I wanted to use EVGA's faceplate, we couldn't do it because Nvidia has tessellated their design in a fashion uh, that these mounting points no longer line up for the screws. And that's a problem. So we can't use this plate anymore. This is effectively useless to us, as you'll see without knocking over 100 video cards, maybe. Yeah, the 980 Ti's. First of all, there's the 980 Ti. You can tell because the GPU is massive compared to the 1080 GP104 GPU. That's GM200. This works well because this was built for this card and it's reference design. You can see if I applied some force, it would actually mount into place and everything would line up. So that's that's fine, but it doesn't work for the 1080. I don't know if uh, Andrew, the camera guy over here, is showing you the stack of video cards teetering on each other, but. So we're just gonna ignore that plate and build this ghetto style, which is fine, because we don't need it to look pretty. We just need it to run for some overclocking tests. Probably gonna mount it like this at the end of the day. And just let the cables be free. That's not really a big deal to me. Uh, but first, of course, we have to rebuild this card and we're gonna start with screwing it in from the underside, all the pieces that I removed earlier. And there's a lot of them. So we're gonna go through that first after reapplying these thermal pads where they belong uh, to give some thermal, thermal protection to the backside of the GPU or whatever's left of those pads anyway. Okay, so the first thing to do, I'm tethered to this thing now, which does make maneuvering a bit difficult, but we're gonna reinstall this expansion cover over here. Uh, there's a couple screws for this, but really not, not a difficult process other than being unable to see what I'm doing because of the pump. So this, we've got hex bolts that flank the DVI slot. I can't do this in a way that you can see it. So we're gonna screw this in. I use the hex driver to finish that off. Hey, right, cool, that's good. Uh, 
Uh, you can no longer use this screwdriver, not only because there's something stuck in it, but because if you look at the end, it's taken a bit of a beating. And also this end is no longer uniform, so we're not gonna use that. But I will return some of these screws to their position for the expansion cover. And that'll lock the expansion cover into place so then we can mount the back plate, the very slow process it takes to reinstall the back plate. Oh, wait, this isn't aligned. Normally I'd be worried about dropping screws into the video card, but seeing as the video card is completely dismantled, <laughs> there's really no danger. I'm glad you can just cut through all of this. Okay, so now that we've gotten the backside situated, so now we've got the expansion cover on, we can start installing all of these screws, which are used, I found out actually uh, just recently, as mounting points for the back plate. So the back plate will use its million tiny dust sized screws and screw into these. So these are a foundation for the smaller ones. That's why we need these in here. There's the thing. Now one of these screws is forever entombed in the screwdriver I'm currently using. Uh, so we are going to be one short until I, I cut this thing open, which we'll do later. That means I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm basically just gonna not put one there and hope that the tension from all the surrounding screws is enough to flatten the thermal pads against the board. I, I really think it'll be fine. There is going to be one missing and I'm strategically choosing to make it that one rather than a corner mount where we won't have any other means to generate the force. And this one, I don't know if you can see that on the camera. This one has uh, the head of a screw in it. You'll see one does and one does, maybe you can see that, I don't know. But the one in my right hand has the head of a screw in it. And that's because those little tiny screws, which are these, uh, I can't even really present it in a way that's meaningful. Those tiny screws it really can't stand a lot of force. So if you, if you screw it down even a reasonable amount, the torque will eventually compromise the head and it'll bust and the body gets stuck in the smaller one. So uh, to get that out, I'd, I'd really have to go to work with some tweezers or something. And it's just not worth it considering it's just a back plate and I, I really don't care to be honest. I just don't because we're just doing a quick mod to see how the thermal performance is, how the OC performance is with liquid. Whether or not that back plate has one extra screw in it is not going to change anything. And that is especially the case because the back plate, especially in that particular region, is built with the intention of being uninstalled for SLI anyway. Uh, so we're really not operating outside of spec. So now we're gonna install the screws for the rest of the expansion slot. Or actually, actually we're not gonna do that. Not gonna do that because I believe, I remember correctly, yes, this goes on first. So obviously uh, I have not done this before because the GTX 1080 and it's brand new. I've done it for the 980 Ti, but that did not have a back plate. So let me just double check that we hit everything and we did. We got all the screws that we have uh, that have not been sucked into a black hole. And now we're screwing in the remainder of the expansion slot screws. I'll lock that into place. And after this, we begin the journey of screwing in an ungodly number of tiny, tiny, tiny screws that will bust if you don't uh, apply exactly the right torque to the head. Okay, cool. This back plate's actually, as I said, not necessary. I think we're gonna go ahead and keep it on uh, just for posterity's sake, but it's really, really not needed if you didn't want it. What tiny screwdriver was I using? All right, so that is the max amount of pressure I can apply. Uh, these, if you do this on your own, hopefully my uh, my encounters with this card will teach you, but basically just until you start feeling the littlest bit of pressure, you just stop. So unlike most screws, these will not tolerate even one turn past that beginning of resistance. They'll just snap and then you really are gonna have a heck of a time trying to get it back out. Yep. I didn't even turn it that hard. I don't, know, I don't know if you can see that, but that little black dot on the end is the head of the screw, and I did not, did not really apply any pressure to that, so I don't know if that's left over from the previous one. Luckily, I have an extra one of these. <laughs> Actually, 
doesn't even matter because I can't use that spot anyway because there's a screw forever in it until we go in there with tweezers. Uh, so that one's no good. Let's just get the rest of these right. We're still in a place where nothing's really compromised though. If I do that too many more times, we're probably gonna have some problems in the future if we try to take this card apart again. But for now we are okay. I'm gonna keep it that way by being exceptionally careful. Stop right there. Oh wait, I can't use that one because that's where the black hole screw is. Yeah, there's a reason these uh, more traditional outlets like, I don't know, maybe Mythbusters or something will put a do not try this at home disclaimer. Now, theirs might be for safety, but ours would be because uh, you will damage things if you mimic me here. But the whole point of the site, luckily, in our, in our unique position, the whole point of the site is to create content. And that is most fun to do by finding unique challenges and being the first to do something like turn a 1080 $700 card into either a liquid cooled beast at overclocking or a brick. Either one creates great content. Uh, so really our, our risk to reward is much more favorable than if you were just trying to do this for fun as an enthusiast. Okay, so that is all the screws that we have available. We're missing three now. Uh, that one's broken, that one's broken, that one's missing again in here. So that's that's what we got. Uh, we are about as close to done as we can be. I'm gonna install this with the tubes facing that direction. I'm gonna clean the top of this GPU just a little bit. And now that that's all relatively shiny, I have this unique jar of thermal paste. This is actually Ace Attack's thermal paste that they pulled off their assembly line for us because I told them I was concerned that using uh, my own thermal compound, like this Antec stuff that we normally use, I told them the concern was, of course, wow, that really smells strong. If we install one of these stock with their paste on it, test it, pull it off, clean it, and then install it with our paste on it, there's going to be variance in the temperature. Uh, so that was the concern. So they provided this. We're going to try and find something to smooth that on the surface. I might actually need to see if I have like an old card I can use in my pocket. So normally I would advise against the credit card suggestion for this for a few reasons. I, I prefer to do a dot in the middle and allow the pressure from screwing down the cold plate spread out the paste but because this isn't in a tube where I can just obviously squeeze it out and let the cold plate take care of the rest, I've got to use a card and we're just gonna pretend that you can't see the Starbucks logo on here. Uh, frankly, they didn't pay for this. This is obviously a giant amount of paste. I'm not gonna use all of it. So before you freak, just keep that in mind. I'm gonna get a reasonable amount on there and kind of spread it, I suppose. I, I really don't like this method, but that's what we're gonna go with today. I'll clean up the exterior after, but this will get us started. Okay. Will you get me the rubbing alcohol? Thank you. <laughs> what I'm doing right now is just cleaning up the edges a bit. It's too much on there. It's spread out a bit over the substrate, which I don't like. Really not gonna, not gonna hurt it, the amount that's on there, but uh, I just wanna clean it up as much as is reasonable. Our uh, paper towel here is running thin on space too. Unlike uh, certain larger YouTube channels, we cannot afford endless paper towels. All right, that's pretty reasonable. I'm, I'm happy enough with that, I think. Uh, it's not perfect, but that's what we got without really using a tube or something proper. But it does mean we can use the original correct thermal paste, so that's a good thing. And we're just gonna uh, go ahead and run with that for this build, because really doing more would be uh, would be sort of unnecessary right now. So let's get this thing mounted. This is as easy as dropping it into the slot on the top like I've done. And we're gonna screw in these screws on the back. Oh, that's a challenge. I don't, have enough, I don't have enough fingers to deal with magnetism right now. 
Okay, cool. So as I've said in the in the previous video, do opposing corners for this. You just want to make sure you're not applying too much pressure to any one side. And also for purposes of spreading out that compound and, and ushering out anything that doesn't belong on the chip uh, or smoothing it out, this will help do that because it'll apply evenly across the IHS surface. It's like a mini game. Bam. One trick with thermal paste is if you put too much on there, you will actually damage the ability for the cold plate to make contact and keep things cool. It's also ideal to make sure it's a smooth distribution because if there's bumpy, and the cold plate application should smooth this out, but if it's bumpy, then it will reflect in the performance of that cold plate. Now this cold plate is interesting because it's an extruded one, which I talked about in the 980 Ti review and the Seahawk review if you're curious about what that means. So there we go, that's, the, that's our ghetto liquid cooling solution for the 1080 is not compatible with the 980 Ti hybrid cover. So we're just gonna leave it just like this because that cover serves no functional purpose. Uh, all we wanna do is cool the GPU proper with liquid. This is, this is making it worse. The VRM blower fan is still here. It's still cooling the VRM, not maybe as effectively, but to improve that a little bit, I'm just gonna go ahead and reinstall this thing, which is, uh, you can see here, it's got kind of a bend to it to help with the airflow. This is no real point in connecting the LEDs. We no longer have the LED part of the, the component attached, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it just to get the cable out of the way of the fan. All right, so that's, that's good. Uh, this is a semi-functional heat sink, so we left that on there. This concludes the mounting of the, the faceplate, which will help guide the airflow from the VRM blower fan. GPU is cooled completely now by this pump. It is no longer cooled by the alloy heat sink, which used to mount here, perhaps that orientation. Uh, so that's covered. We just have to screw in these screws and then the rest of the card can remain dismantled until we convert it back into its original state, assuming it still, uh, <laughs> still works at that time. Actually, we may not even have anywhere to screw this into now that I'm thinking about it. Oh, yeah, there is somewhere I can screw it in, okay. So because we've taken this all apart, the this is where that would screw in, but that was obstructing our ability to plug in the fan for this liquid solution. So that's gone. I can't screw them in over here for the same reason because we got rid of the bigger part of the faceplate. So now we're just gonna use these tiny, tiny screws because these will still work and mount the right side of the plate just back into these pegs. That'll keep it positioned in a way that won't cause damage or fall off or do any direct shorts. But otherwise, uh, I mean, it's not pretty, but it's just going an open bench anyway, which isn't pretty either. So all we wanna do is test the thermals. So for part three of this build, that is the part where we're gonna show the benchmark performance of this liquid cooled solution. I'll explain why it succeeds or fails in this particular installation and application. And we're gonna look at the thermal throttling potential on the 1080 with liquid specifically now. So previously it was throttling at about 82 degrees Celsius. You can see that in our 1080 review. That throttle is put there so it'll keep itself under control and prevent any real serious overheating. So instead you end up with a clock rate that dips every now and then and that does impact the low frame times for the maybe five to 10 seconds that the dip is occurring. Whether you notice it or not really depends on sort of how high your graphics settings are, things like that. But uh, overall this should, my theory, uh, is that this should sustain a higher clock rate and a higher overclock without hitting that thermal barrier that we're hitting at about 82 Celsius with, with, with the air solution. So uh, that 82 Celsius throttle is a sort of big deal on the 1080, but check back for part three of this. You'll see how it performs. We'll do the thermal testing, get this saga concluded so I can put this thing back together because honestly in this state, it kind of stresses me out because it's a $700 card. It looks terrible and I've broken or lost several screws in the process of doing this. So hopefully everything's all good. Either way, it's at least, I wouldn't say good, but modest entertainment value. And the, the testing data should be the most fun to look at. So thank you for watching. Patreon link the post video if you wanna help us out directly because we may need to crowdfund another one of these if it no longer works. I'll see you all next time.